All right, I'm realizing that I never uh, made a video explaining how to properly work through a module. Uh, many of you got it figured out, but um, for those of you having trouble, I'm going to do this quick run through of this module. We're going to do connecting rod. Um, I, I'll just walk through it. You can watch along and see what I do to get through it. That way, if you have any problems, I'll, I'll have you watch this. Make sure that you're following the steps I am, and we can go from there uh, to figure out why you're having problems, uh, computer issues or something. So I'm in the first page here, uh, Connecting Rod Basics. We have um, w like chapters up here and then we've got pages down here. So just like a book, we're on chapter one, page one. Uh, so we're going to click on a connecting rod and that's correct. And as soon as we get the correct, we can go on to the next view the animation what is the function of the connecting rod so to drive the oil pump no work together with the crankshaft to convert up and down movement of the piston into rotating movement yes it does not open and close the valves that's the camshaft and transfer force to the piston uh or uh, force of the piston to the crankshaft absolutely now we're on page three here or uh, yeah page three um, in chapter one, why is the cross section of the connecting rod an I or H shape? So we, we can see up here, uh, these shapes make the connecting rod strong while keeping mass low. So they, nothing about cost. So we're not going to mention that, but strength and weight. Yes. So now that we're done there, we can go to page two. Most connecting rods are made of alloy steel or light metal. So from which material can a connecting rod be made? Alloy steel, not brass, not plastic, and aluminum, uh, aluminum, <laughs> aluminum, uh, aluminum uh, is a light metal. So we'll go with that. Uh, brass is pretty heavy, actually. Click on the piston to disassemble it. Now it wants us to, to click on all these, so I'm just going to work through them real quick. The rod end cap, the small end, the big end, and the bearing shelves, the bolts, the piston, and the piston pin. Then we'll move on to the next page. What is the function of the bearing shells? So uh, the uh, bearing shells to provide bearing support for the crankshaft. Nope, the, the crankshaft uses main bearings uh, to support the crankshaft to connect the piston to the connecting rod. No, that's the piston to the connecting rod. Doesn't use the bearing shells uh, up here. It's got like a, a bushing up there. Um, and then to provide bearing support for the connecting rod. Check. Yep. Okay. Two more pages here. So click on the crankshaft to examine uh, the lubrication of the connecting rod. So keep in mind, this is the question is about the connecting rod. So we can see coming through here which parts of the connecting rod are lubricated. The crankshaft bearings. The crankshaft is not part of the connecting rod. So yes. The crankshaft is getting oil right here, uh, but that is not part of the connecting rod. So I don't really like that, but that is what it is. The crankshaft gear right here is clearly not getting oil, so that's definitely a no. And then the big end and the small end definitely are. So this is the big end and the small end. Check. And... And now we finish. Now we can go back. If you go back from here, you will see that you've got um, credit for having worked through this. Uh, make sure that you take a quiz right after this so that this information is fresh on your mind. Uh, and as always, if you have any questions, please ask. One other thing while we're here, I, I know I've lost most of you at this point, but this again is the uh, comment icon. You can click on that and it will tell me the chapter and page that you're working on and that you're stuck on so I can pull that up and help more easily. So thank you very much.